Problem 17. Suppose a is a real number such that the equation is given below has more than one solution in the interval of 0 to pi. The set of all possible a can be written in the form of the given expression, where pq are real numbers and p less than q less than r. What is p plus q plus r? One big theme of AMC questions is to not get intimidated easily. When you see a question where you're given a very unknown expression where it's ultimately um, you know, simplified into, never fear. Because the reason why is because all of these questions, right? can be based down and simplified into very simple subjects, such as um, needing to understand a quadratic, or maybe needing to understand the meaning of, you know, that x squared is all positive, for example. Now, I'm not saying that this is applicable for this question, but I'm saying that these unorthodox final, you know, derivatives often are based in, you know, very simple logic reasons. And that's why you should never be afraid. And when you're given an expression such as this and you're trying to find all solutions of A, you should think of simplification. Because when you think of sine of 2x and sine of 3x, they are obviously, you know, different formats of sine x. And we can always boil things down, such as in this format, into basic um, first degree um, trigonometric functions like sine. So let's do that. If we were to break this down, well, sine x still remains as sine x, but what is sine of 2x? Well, based on the formula, that's 2 sine x and cosine x. Now, of course, if you do not know this formula, you can always just use this general formula where sine of a plus b is sine of a cosine of b, right, plus cosine of a times sine of b. And then you can apply it and get the following same result. Now, this would be equal to on the left hand side, sine of 2x plus x. Now, what is that equal to? Well, from this equation right here, I know that sine of 2x, cosine of x, right, plus cosine of 2x times sine of x. Now, with this, we can simplify this even further. Because sine of 2x, like I said, is no more than 2 sine x, right, and then times cosine x, combined with this cosine x, that becomes cosine squared of x. And then cosine 2x, well, that's 1 minus 2 sine, square, 2 sine squared x. So 1 minus 2 sine squared x times sine x would be right here. Now, we notice here that sine x and sine x are both present. And when we're trying to simplify things, factoring is always a good way to go. So sine x gets factored out. This becomes 2 cosine squared of x. And then we have minus, or come on, minus 2 sine squared of x. And then we have plus 1. Right? But on the left hand side, it's a good way to introduce that we also have a sine x term right here. So let's factor that out, a sine of x, to get a of 1 plus 2 cosine of x. Now notice I have a cosine term right here. I want to be able to factor this into this right here, because that looks awfully suspicious, where I have a cosine squared, but then I have a cosine right there, and I can turn sine squared into cosine squared by turning this into sine x of 2 cosine squared x minus 2 of 1 minus cosine squared x plus 1. Now with this, that's equal to sine x of, well, negative 2 cosine, negative 2 times negative cosine squared x is positive, combined with 2 cosine squared x becomes 4 cosine squared x, minus 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Now notice, this is a perfect square, so that's equal to sine of x times 2 cosine x plus 1 times its conjugate of 2 cosine x minus 1. Now that's equal to the left-hand side, so let's try to isolate a. In this case, the isolating a will get you sine of x times 2 cosine x plus 1, 2 cosine x minus 1, all divided by um, sine of x times 1 plus 2 cosine of x. Now, we need to be careful when we, fat, when we cross things out, because we know that we're trying to find all possible solutions of a. And we know that when we cross out functions in the numerator and denominator, we potentially eliminate, eliminate potential sources of solutions. So let's first consider sine x, where everything is shared. If we have sine x, let's scroll up. We are told that they must have more than one solution in the interval. So if there's more than one solution on the interval, how many solutions does sine of x have from 0 to pi? Well, from 0 to pi, sine can only be 0, 0, and that's only one solution where x is 0. So if we were to have sine of x included within the final expression, then this will limit the number of solutions, not expand it, because they can only have one solution. Therefore, sine of x gets eliminated. But what about 2 cosine x plus 1? Well, 2 cosine x plus 1, right? 2 cosine x plus 1. Well, it, when it's equal to 0, x is equal to negative 1 over 2. But when it's equal to pi, then x is equal to pi minus 1 over 2, which I don't know what that is, but the idea here is that there's two distinct values of x. So if we were to eliminate this term with the one in the denominator, then we effectively eliminate the previously mentioned potential solutions, where cosine of x times 2 plus 1 offer us two distinct solutions. So if we eliminate them, we limit ourselves, so we cannot do that. Therefore, we can only leave it as 4 cosine squared of x minus 1 over 1 plus 2 cosine x. We cannot go any further. 
So with this established, right, don't make that mistake of can canceling it out because if you do, then you limit yourself in solving the question. So we know we're trying to solve for potential solutions of A, so let's try to rewrite this where we isolate cosine of x because it's shared on both numerator and denominator, and that should be suspicious. So A plus 2A cosine of x, right, minus 4 cosine squared of x, and then plus 1 should give 0. If we were to isolate this and reduce 4 cosine squared x minus 2A of cosine x, cosine x minus a minus 1, uh, a plus 1 rather, a plus, because we multiply negative 1 on both sides, right? So it's negative a minus 1, so it's neg yep, plus 1, must give 0. Now with this, what does this remind you of? Well, look at this. Cosine is squared here, but then here is raised to the first power. Think about a quadratic, where it is likewise raised to a second term, plus bx plus c is equal to 0. Notice that like the, like the equation right here, we have a x to the first term and x to the second term, just like in this expression. Therefore, we can relate it into this format and use the quadratic equation, where in this case, x is the, the values of solutions for this function, but the x in this case represents the cosine value, because that's what it substitutes. So this would be equal to cosine x, right? The output of, um, you know, bracket sign over here to indicate that it's not really x, it's like a representation of cosine x, which is the actual solutions, would be equal to the quadratic equation, 2 times a, which is 2 times 4, negative b, so it's 2a plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 4a squared, plus, um, plus um, uh, 4ac, so 4ac. And now, we can simplify this, because we know that if we were to expand this, we can factor out a factor of 4 from both 4 and 16. So that is 2a plus minus 2 times the square root. If I expand it now, 2a squared plus 4a, right? Uh, we factor out a 4, right? So 4a, and then it's plus 4, all divided by 8. Uh, oh, wait, sorry, that's, that's, that'll just be an a squared term, because no more 4. But notice what a squared plus 4a plus 4 is. If I were to have a plus 2 squared, that's equal to a squared plus 4a plus 4. So right off the bat, I can say that this can be reduced into a perfect square, and taking the square root of a perfect square just gives that quantity originally. So that's 2a plus minus 2 times a plus 2, all over 8. So now if we simplify this even further by dividing a factor of 2 on both sides, that's a plus minus um, a plus 2, all over 8. So in other words, cosine of x, right, that's the ultimate solutions we're trying to solve for, could be 2a plus 2 over 8, right? Or it could be cosine x is equal to a minus a plus 2, which becomes negative 2 over 8, which becomes negative 1 over 4, which becomes a plus 1 over 4. Now, we need to be careful here, because we know that for any quadratic equation, right, so any quadratic equation, there's three possible cases for the number of solutions that it has. It can have two solutions, one solution, or zero solutions. If it has one solution, it can be factored into the form of x minus n squared. But if it's two solutions, it can be factored into x minus n times x minus m, where n and m are distinct. Now, what if the first um, solve for cosine, so like this is the first and the second one, what if this value is equal to negative one over four? That would mean I have, I can factor this into this expression. And thus, I would only have one solution. But that would violate the condition where I have more than one solution. So that would mean a plus 1 over 4 cannot equal negative 1 over 4. Therefore, 4a plus 4 cannot equal negative 4. Therefore, 4a cannot equal negative 8. Therefore, a cannot be equal to negative 2. All right, we have our condition right here. Now let's consider what a can be. <coughs> now, a, what a can be, well, we can solve it from this equation right here. But notice what we have in the previous example, because I don't know what cosine x is equal to negative 1 over 4. I don't know what that is. But I do know that I have an interval of 0 to pi. If that interval is what binds the cosine function, because that's where the solutions can exist, that would mean cosine x is restricted from x is equal to um, 0 to pi. Therefore, the actual function of cosine x, the evaluated values, will be limited to cosine of 0, which is 1, all the way to cosine of pi, which is negative 1. So that means it can only exist within the bounds of 1 to negative 1. Therefore, whatever x can be, the a plus 1 over 4 term must likewise be restricted within the negative 1, comma 1 um, range. Because a plus 1 over 4 is equal to cosine x, but cosine x is limited to negative 1, 1. Therefore, this expression, a plus 1 over 4, must be limited likewise. So if I scroll over, that would mean a plus 1 over 4 can equal negative 1. That would be the lowest, and a plus 1 over 4 can equal positive 1, and that would be the highest. If I were to have you evaluate this one, 
a will be equal to um, 4 minus 1, which is equal to 3. And for this one, a is equal to negative 4 minus 1, which is negative 5. So that means so that means the cosine of x could be within um, negative 5, right, all the way to 3. And that should be open bracket. Now, with this, we also know that x cannot be equal to negative 2. Therefore, we can break this interval up, since we cannot include negative 2, to be negative 5 comma negative 2 union negative 2 comma 3. And notice, again, we have used basic logic to simplify what we originally thought to be something complex into something that's relatively simple. We just reasoned our through, we just reasoned our way through what was given to us. So if we scroll back up, we can now finally solve this question. Because PQ union QR, well, that's just negative 5 comma negative 2 union negative 2 comma 3. Therefore, we must add P, Q, and R to get our final answer. Negative 5 plus negative 2 gives negative 7, plus 3 gives negative 4. Therefore, your final answer will be answer choice A.